Hey everyone, welcome to our third episode of Arcast Podcast. Today we have a Halloween special on haunted paintings. Ooh. I'm here with my co-host Santa Zang. Hello. And today we have extra special guests, Hannah Morales, Alyssa, Sa'el, Liliana. And Viha. Thanks, everyone. So I'm going to turn it over to the guests who have done an abundant amount of research on this topic. Um, so I researched the painting, The Hands Resist Him. I think a few others also researched this one. But um, it was an oil painting painted by William Stoneham. And it was a image of a boy and a girl and the girl is a doll and there's handprints on the glass and a lot of people have had like really weird experiences with the painting and there have been a lot of like not only the original painting but also like copies of it there have been <laughs> Hannah's making me laugh right now <laughs> You want to you wanna say something? What? I didn't do anything. <laughs> Why are you incriminating me right now? Okay, continue. But okay. Also, another interesting fact about this, because I also researched it, was that a, it's based off a photo taken of the artist, but the artist, like, changed the photo. So it's not really that, like, something traumatic happened to him that's causing this, like, weird stuff to happen. It's like he changed it. Yeah, I think... I think the po the sorry the art mostly reflects the poem that the the artist's wife made about him kind of recently it has the same title as the painting it was basically about like when he was a kid cuz he was like an orphan so the hands like in the background are supposed to like represent the different paths and lives he could have had and the girl is apparently like his guide that's so interesting imagine having like a doll for a guide that's kind of creepy who wouldn't want a doll as like your guide that is kind of creepy. <laughs> I definitely agree with the art piece. Like, that's, like, it's a thing where artists, they usually take pictures and they incorporate it into their art by, like, looking at it as a reference, but changing it up a bit. That's what I do. Like, as an artist, I can definitely relate with this. I think it's super cool that to see, like, famous artists do the same because, like, it just brings a little bit of normality to the artist. Um, like, since, um, one of the guests, like, mentioned, like, the hands representing, like, paths, um, what does, like, the title mean then? Because, like, like, it's, like, the hands that resist them, right? Or, like, so what does the title mean, necessarily? That's like, a good point. Yeah. Oh, my like, God, like, if it's resisting him, that would mean that, like, the hands are, like, stopping him, right? Or resisting? I mean, like, I, there's a that could be, but, like, I don't know the meaning of it. Yeah. So me that's why I'm asking, like. The rest of the guests, like, what are we thinking, guys? What is the resistance here? Any ideas? Um, oh, no. I, never, I just wanted to talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have an idea. Um, oh, that's really close to my mouth. <laughs> Thank you, Viha. Uh, but maybe maybe the resistance is like, like, mm, Hannah, why don't you, why don't you? I got you. I got you. Um, so the boy is, um, like Liliana said, it, um, it's just a representation of the artist when he was uh, younger, but the doll is supposed to represent like a guide or companion through the world. And the glass is like supposed to be the border of like reality and dream. So like, it's like them crossing that border and the handprints are like other lives like other people oh wow yeah like after you say that i can see it um i really love how they make the girl a doll then because it's that companion that never leaves you and i spe especially like as a kid that's what you think when you have your doll you name it and you take it with you everywhere you take it to the bathroom you take it in the bath oh that's the bathroom um you take it <laughs> you take it with you to watch movies with your family i had that same doll 
with um the Woody. Same doll. No, 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 not the same doll. <laughs> but my mom did make me have American Girl dolls when I was little. But off topic, off topic. But oh, sorry guys, little lag there. Um, <laughs> but I can definitely see how that's like his imagination. That's beautiful, beautiful. I have pulled up here one of the sequels to the painting that the the painter made. It's like a series. If anyone wants to give the thought their thoughts on it, because it's kind of like a continuity of the previous. Um, how many sequels are there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There were three, I think. This might be a funny question, guys, but what was the haunting? Like, what actually happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the painting was sold on eBay in 2000, and the final price it was sold for was $1,050. And a family bought it not thinking there was anything wrong with the painting, and they put it in their four-year-old child's room. And the it was fine up until the child, the daughter, started uh, claiming that uh, she was seeing the characters in the painting come into her room at night and arguing with each other. And that's when they started getting a little suspicious. And I think currently it's in like a museum somewhere. So since since Viaha is telling about how like this painting is so haunted or whatnot, can I ask like, is the sequel like also haunted? Like, does it give that same, I don't know, creepy energy or whatever? Like, do we have stories of that? I think um, like going off of that, um, it's not, the sequels were made because of the first one. So like the sequels were made with more haunting intention than like the first one was. And actually before it got sold on eBay, um, it was given to a gallery owner and like the gallery owner and another actor who had like influence in it or like was had it for a piece of time. They both died shortly after. So it's like two people died when they had possession of the, uh, image and now like it's being sold so it's very interesting i don't know if it's like coincidence or not coincidence but i'm pretty sure the second one like zael was asking about is made because the first one had this weird story um so since lily was saying that the the, the sequels were made it's just because the first one had so much i don't know popularity i guess is the word um maybe that like decreed like takes away from the creepy effect because i don't know like if i it's like how they make like bad movie sequels because the first one like yeah. blew up so much. honestly i don't think they're haunted i don't think this yeah. piece is haunted if i'm gonna be it, honest if you like, i you feel like... like it's a lot of coincidences so unlike you folks i actually have a piece that you know is haunted okay so we everyone knows like claude monet obviously right and what people don't know is his like you know unnamed painting so it's it's like called like it's like unnamed that's like okay hold on let me let me go further into this so this painting was made for like a funeral for like one of his besties like cousin's wife or something and so claude was like yeah i'll do that and and so you know how like his his style is very like like if you zoom in, it, it looks like craziness and then you zoom out and it's like so coherent and like it makes sense. So when this was a big painting, by the way, it was like very large. So like if you went up close, you would like see the small like intricacies. Right. And people would say so, you know, it appeared at the at the funeral, you know, um, the OK, his best friend's cousins, like the husband of the wife that died that person like they received the painting and you know it was chill at first and then it was like presented like at the funeral very private funeral and then like it was it was fine like it looked normal like all zoomed in and everything until after the funeral um the husband started seeing his wife's face like in the close-up brush strokes and so she's haunting that um, that may have just been like him trying to cope with grief. <laughs> I'm not like, has anybody else ever had bad experiences with the painting or was it only him? Yeah, so this is when like, um, you know, the, the husband was like, okay, Monet, 
why are you trolling me like this? You know, because he, he was like, when I, that, this is a sick joke that you're putting my wife's face and like in the brush strokes. And then, and then like Claude was like, what do you mean? And so, you know, Claude goes back over there, like, you have a complaint with my, my painting or whatever. You know, they start beefing a little bit. And then, and so he looks closer and he's like, I, I made a face. Um, he, he looks closer and he, he, okay, so Claude doesn't actually know what the wife looks like. So he does, he says, he says he give he gives the, the husband like the benefit of the doubt. Like, okay, I see my brushstrokes like can look like a, like a face there, but that's not your wife. Okay. And, and so Claude dismisses it and he's like, I'm out of here. And the husband is still really mad, you know? So he gets like, he gets like more people like from the funeral like, come check it out because like, those are the people who like saw it like first. So like they saw it before um the husband started seeing the faces you know and so everyone that was at the funeral also reported seeing like faces but like not specifically his wife's but the the interesting thing was that they all saw faces in different like parts of the painting so yeah so that's why it's like haunted like you know like the faces are so like after oh wait Oh my God. Okay. So like after hearing that whole show buckle, like of, you know, Claude Monet's painting, um, I feel like an important takeaway is that, you know, people are saying, oh, um, this painting is really haunted. It's like stuff isn't happening to my son. And the value is that like people can have their own interpretations on the art. Like, um, like some people may see the face that Hannah was talking about. Some may not see the faces. And, you know, I think, I think I, this is poorly articulated, but like, I think that is like the power of art to put your own meaning through it, even if it's like, you know, scaring you or whatever. I think that's like, that's the biggest takeaway that I have from this. It shows how people, um, like kind of a grieving process of this man who lost his but um it definitely it shows us like how you can see someone in something you're grieving it could it doesn't even have to be like a face it could be like if you're in the park and you're watching leaves fall or something that can remind you of someone or it doesn't have to be someone that necessarily passed on but someone that you've lost and i think that that's the value of art that we see in this piece how many people like you can see things in through art and it does, doesn't really have to be like what the artist intended it to be as long as I don't know it's just I have as personally as someone who experienced a heartbreak recently I can definitely concur with this and I yeah it's just it's powerful so I wanted to kind of just circle back to the first painting and see where this painting ended up. Does anyone have any research? Um, I remember reading it, but I'm not sure if I remember. So basically, this woman in Michigan bought it for <laughs> for a thousand twenty five. But from what I read, she like literally just locked it in a shed, and so they're like refusing any like giant purchases people are trying to make for it, like thousands of dollars, and they're just saying no to keep it like locked in a room away. There was something that I wanted to uh, talk about, but there was this one other experience. This wasn't with the original painting, but there was this man who saw about it. So what he did was he printed out a photo of the painting and he left it there on the printer. And he, he left for a trip to Italy. And when he came back, he said the entire room was like destroyed, except the paper, like the paper was like intact and still sitting there. Yeah, what's also interesting is that um, something I found was that people who had just viewed the painting, not necessarily purchased it, um, reported like that they had fainting, that they had blackouts, that they heard children screaming, that power and technology wasn't working. And uh, very interestingly, as I was researching for this, when I was writing down that the technology stopped working, my audio, because I was listening to a video, glitched. And I was like, this is kind of creepy. And I didn't know how to feel about it. <laughs> I think since, because everyone's saying like, oh, I looked at this and like, I don't know, podcast 
some tragedy is gonna befall us. No, don't, don't make that. Don't make that. <laughs> what? Am I gonna jinx us? Yes, you can jinx Sorry, us. Sorry, guys. What um someone said about the house getting wrecked apart when they came home. Imagine if they just had a cat or dog or something, and that cat or dog went ham. Okay, I'm sorry. Go on. So basically, I also had a similar experience with like the technology malfunction when I was reading about the art piece, where like they, my internet went out. Not just the page of the article, but like the video I was watching too on the side like stopped working. Okay, so that's that's funny because like while i was researching the claude monet painting right the no name like it like i didn't have any issues with that like with like technology you know because <laughs> because um like you really had to be there for that painting i think which um the husband actually since we were talking about like where like the painting ended up um the husband ended up you know destroying it because it drove him mad in this painting um this one's called the anguished man uh i have no clue who created it i mean there are images uploaded like you can find images of it but um there's not it's not really known who made it and supposedly this artist mixed their blood into the painting i don't know how true that is this could be completely unreliable but soon after he was dealing with stuff and ended up uh not being around anymore. Um, and then apparently his painting was sold to another person whose grandmother believed it was cursed and that when the piece was hung up on the family uh, like wall or mantle, they ended up hearing whispering at night and like crying and they like saw a shadowy figure. So I don't know if it's haunted or like what's the deal with it, but pretty creepy. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I thought she said, like, Englishmen. So English. I was like, no. I was, like, looking up Englishmen. I'm like, I don't think this is painted with blood. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's English. A-N-G-U-I-S-H-E-D. So I wanted to kind of bring up another subject to kind of end on, which is our feelings on haunted places and objects and just supernatural things in general just to end on that note i don't want to fully dismiss the idea of like supernatural and haunted objects and stuff because like it's really cool like i love like, that stuff but also like a lot of the time it might seem it kind of comes off like it's either for p attention or that it's like just kind of paranoia from people's heads i yeah i definitely agree with you it's also could be some type of like mental illness because i know that um no, I, I like I don't mean that in like a bad way, but I do know people with mental illness and they see stuff that may not be real. And that's something a lot of artists do also. Like, yeah. Um, I agree. I'm also like half and half on the topic of supernatural stuff. Like, I do believe that it is definitely possible that they do exist, but a lot of the time it is fake. Um, also, I feel like haunted isn't the right word to put to a lot of these things because I feel like haunted is like, it gives you like a bad vibe. I feel like a lot of the time, this kind of stuff shouldn't be giving you a bad vibe. I just feel like it's just like the thing stereotype. that's, yeah, the stereotype yes. that society yes. puts on it. So for me, when I think of haunted, I think of like possession. Like, so somebody has to be, you know, like some somebody who like died or something that passed away has to like, you know, come back and possess or whatever and, and make it haunted so i feel like what we talked about more like today like with the the hands that resist or something i don't think that was haunted i think that was just like some spookiness going on like i don't like i don't think something came back and you know like wreaked havoc like you know um to just go off what viaha was saying earlier i just a thought popped into my mind um I think we associate like um, all these stories of um, spirits and the supernatural world just to, you know, explain like the world around us. And some people are like, um, well, it's not scientific. Um, that's just like the other side of the coin for us. So it just comes out of the, you know, the human desire to just understand and like understand what's going on around us whether that be through myths or through scientific discoveries. 
No, I agree. Because I feel like a lot of times haunted, things that are considered haunted, end up having, like, really logical explanations for them. And, like, it's only the stuff that's not considered, like, having logical explanations that people are like, whoa, that's so crazy. Like, those, I feel like, are the haunted things. But I feel like 99% of the time, it's, like, something that you can explain. It's very weird. I agree. It's, like, the human mind trying to process it. Definitely second that. It's a form of art, in a way, haunted stories. Well, thank you so much for everyone who joined us. And we had a lot of fun making Woo! this podcast. <laughs> um, and we hope you enjoy.